Hi everybody, it's Mr. Auerbach and I am here to give you a little bit of a guided tour through a lecture presentation about the basics of the DNA. Now, DNA is a molecule that keeps a code of information in our cells for everything about us, and this is the way that it works. It's actually a four-letter code. The letters of the code are called bases, and they hold the information in the cells, and then they're attached to a backbone, which is made of ribose, sugar, and phosphate, sort of interconnected over and over again. And then um, the way that they get put together, and we're talking about billions, three or four billion base letters in our DNA genome, the way they get put together is what makes up all of the things that make us us. The bases have names, they go by letters A, C, T, and G, but they are called adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. Now, to make it more stable, DNA is a double-stranded molecule, but it isn't the same bases across from each other. Uh, instead, what happens is bases are considered complementary. And the way it works is that A and T always go together, whichever side of the double-stranded molecule they're on. C and G always go together, whichever side of the molecule they're on. And so why does this work? One thing is it makes it a more stable molecule. The other thing is uh, DNA is really important. And so having a second strand is like having a backup copy. Uh, for example, if ultraviolet radiation damages the DNA, then what can happen is bases can be destroyed and those could be very important instructions. And so because there are two strands, that makes it easy for the cell to figure out what to do and how to fix the situation because it knows, for example, that if there's a C here, a G goes here, and if there's an A here, a T must go here. And so those are easily fixed, just like that. Now, what DNA does is it codes for making proteins in the body, but DNA can't leave the body, or excuse me, it can't leave the nucleus of the cell. It stays in there. It's sort of like reference materials uh, in the library. You can't take them out. Um, but the thing is, the information has to go outside of the nucleus in order to make proteins in the ribosome. And so the solution is that another molecule called RNA, which is only one strand, is used to make a copy of the DNA. Uh, and then the, the single-stranded RNA can leave the nucleus and go to the ribosome. The bases of RNA are almost the same as DNA. The three of them are exactly the same. A, C, T, and G are still A, C, T, and G, and they still match with the same complementary bases, but one is different. Instead of thymine, we have a base called uracil, uh, which will ma which will be put in its place. As you can see here, it still matches up with A, and so it works exactly the same way, except that having U instead of T in RNA helps the cell keep straight which molecule is which. So here's what happens. When it comes time to make a gene, the DNA unzips in the spot that the mRNA needs to be copied from, the gene that is being copied. Uh, and then once that unzips, then the process of transcription happens. And that's when you start to match up the RNA bases with the DNA bases on what's called the coding strand. And that's the one of the two strands that actually has the code that needs to be copied. And so all of them have been copied. And then once that happens, uh, then the messenger RNA leaves. It goes out into the cytoplasm and the DNA gets put back together and that's the, the process. The, the, the messenger RNA strand, as you can see, goes out into the cytoplasm and here comes the ribosome uh, in the nucleus to make the protein. 
And so that's the basics of DNA, folks. And what's going to happen next is you're going to learn how the RNA, once it goes out into the cell in the ribosome, is turned into protein. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Thank you very much for all the great work that you're doing. I am Mr. Auerbach, and I will talk to you later. Bye.